There are exactly four frame one moves in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Fox and Falco's Shine, Mr. Game & Watch's Up B, and Jigglypuff's Rest. Now, mind you, I'm only talking about frame one moves that present a hitbox here. If we want to get really technical about it, things like shielding, taunting, and pausing are all also frame one options. So the next time you're about to become embedded into Smash history, make sure you keep that one in mind. I was this close to quitting out. I had my thumb on the start button, and then right before the knee came, I just thought to myself, wait, this is not a good idea. I shouldn't do this. Okay, anyway, it wouldn't be that unreasonable to think that these frame one startup moves are some of the best in the game, simply because there isn't anything else that could possibly be faster. And you'd be right most of the time. There's already been a pretty exhaustive set of videos out there talking about why these moves are so good, or even broken to an extent. But sometimes, in very, very rare situations, the best moves in the game can turn into the worst. Okay, wait, what the hell is that? I'm gonna have to talk about this one, huh? Grand Finals of Super Smash Con 2023 was one of the most tense matches of the year. With just a few seconds left on the clock in the final deciding Game 5 of the tournament, it all came down to one gamble from this guy. Okay, relax. To bet on a first place victory. But remarkably, this all or nothing rest missed. And rightfully so, you're probably sitting there like, how the fuck did that miss? Well, let's back it up a little bit and first see how we got here. But first, I want to thank Puzzles and Survival for sponsoring today's video. Wow, what a name. Wow, what a logo. Wow, what a holy shit! Puzzles and Survival is a match three puzzle meets strategy game that has you saving, uh, humanity, I guess. Its apocalyptic features have you solving puzzles to kill zombies, crafting cutting edge equipment, and recruiting heroes with actual superpowers. It really is a one of a kind zombie themed mobile game, and there's a new storyline featuring more alliance activities to boost your EXP. All right, no more corporate voice. If you just download Puzzles and Survival for free now with the link in my description, they will actually pay me real money, like United States dollars, which uh, kind of allows me to do this as a career. So maybe go get it and help a brother out. Thank you again to Puzzles and Survival for supporting the channel, and I hope you enjoy today's video. We're at Super Smash Con 2023 over in Chantilly, Virginia, and we've arrived in Grand Finals. Sitting here is Zane, who was ranked number one on the Summer 2023 rankings at this tournament against Hungrybox, one of the original five gods of Melee, who's on one of his strongest runs of the year. Over the years, Zane has slowly but surely turned an awful matchup into Hungrybox into a dominating one, losing almost every set they played from 2017 to 2019, then fully turning the corner and winning almost every set they played from 2020 to now, including going completely undefeated against Hungrybox for each of the five sets they played prior to here. This Super Smash Con was different for HBox though. After winning three, or I guess more like two part sets because Mango went Doc and Marth, against Moki and Cody Schwab, both Fox players who had positive records on him in 2023. Zayn, on the other hand, was looking to reassert his dominance at this event, not going to game five versus any of his opponents on a rather smooth sailing path to grand finals on the winner's side. But here, things got a little weird. Much like Zayn and HBox is set at the Ludwig Ogren Championship Series 5, the only other match in 2023 that went to Game 5, HBox wins the first two and threatens to complete the set with just one more. Please, for the love of God, but also like their LACS 5 set, Zayn recomposes and brings it back to potentially reverse sweep. A big difference between these two sets, though, is in how willing Hungrybox is to slow the pace down to an almost complete halt. He takes his time making his counter pick, potentially looking to ice Zane out a bit, then goes to Dreamland 64, one of the biggest legal stages in Melee's current rule set. This game 5 is slow. Like, really slow. The first stocks from Zane and HBox don't go until about two full minutes in, which is usually roughly on pace to hit a timeout, where if time does run out, the player with more stocks wins, or in the situation where both players have the same number of stocks, the one with the lower percent wins. Another stock from each falls off almost exactly two minutes later, then with two minutes left in the game and potentially the set, Zane has a stock lead. At 129, HBox gets a power shield on Zane's Nair, which the power shield does technically allow him to go for a counter hit with either a smash attack or B move. After power shielding an attack, the shielding character has to drop their shield, which takes 15 frames to complete, but you can perform an A or B attack to cancel those shield dropping frames to act earlier. So HBox could have gone for something like an F smash here, which is close to a guaranteed KO in this position on most all trajectory DI Zane could have gone for, but he perhaps wasn't expecting to get this power shield on the hit as he opts to wave dash out and scout a jump from Zane instead. After a back and forth scramble, a crouch underneath Zane's standing grab attempt finds HBox a rest plus a star KO as an added bonus for a full reset at last stock. When Zane appears on the Angel platform, there's one minute and 22 seconds remaining. 
Players are able to hang out on that platform for five seconds, and then they're given an additional two seconds of invincibility after they drop down. So if Zayn really wants to play for the timeout now, this essentially puts the game at 115 with Zayn in the lead. A fair at 108, a short grab sequence with a missed pivot tipper attempt at 56 seconds, and two more fares at 39 seconds all but seals the game. It's 9% to 94% in Zane's favor, and remember, if stocks are even during a timeout, the player with the lower percent wins. As we point out on commentary, we've hit a point where HBox's only realistic out is a rest, but the rest also has to KO. We're hitting the point where it's rest or bust. It, yes, the point it's it's return, bust. Yeah. Jigglypuff doesn't have a ton of options to rack up damage against a low percent Marth all that quickly. Couple that with Zane's incredible patience through this game and the fact that almost all of HBox's early stocks came from rest, and the win condition becomes very clear. It is rest or bust. HBox and Zane trade hits at 32 seconds, but this doesn't really advance the game state all that much for HBox, aside from increasing Zane's percentage to make a rest kill more likely. But to play devil's advocate here a bit, every hit does kind of matter if we're narrowing HBox's win cons down to just rest. A grounded rest from center against absolutely zero DI will kill Marth as early as 14%, but against perfect survival DI and without considering SDI, it's a kill around 30%. A clean opening from HBox with 30 seconds left on the clock gets Zane above that 30% threshold, and excluding just a raw rest off of, say, another whiff grab from Marth like we saw earlier in the set, a lot of HBox's setups will involve a preceding hit to increase Zane's percentage that much further. It is absolutely not perfect, but with close to no time left on the clock, it'll have to do. And like Divine Intervention, the opportunity presents itself just a couple seconds later. At 28 seconds, Zane accidentally air dodges and misses the right platform. This puts him in a ton of lag. Hungrybox is in position for a small punish with something like a bear, but that doesn't knock down until 38% if Zayn just isn't even holding his controller. Otherwise, Marth can ASDI down without being put into knockdown until 76% and look to counterattack. So knowing this would put Zayn in a position to potentially counterpunch, HBox looks for a crazy mix-up. Zane shields on landing and times a jump out of shield specifically to beat Hungrybox's turnaround grab attempt, as empty hop turnaround grab is a super common landing pattern that we see HBox and other Jigglypuff players go for. But instead, HBox risks it all and goes for an up tilt, which looks subtle, but is quite possibly the most fucked up part of this entire sequence. Yeah, yeah, you can pop off for this one, man. If Zane holds shield for just a few frames longer, he gets a grab and can 50-50 between forward throw or down throw, which converts into pivot F smash. Either of these throws from Marth lead to a guaranteed combo that HBox would have to DI differently in order to avoid. For forward throw, he needs to DI up into the right or down into the left, and for down throw, he needs to DI down into the right. So it's tricky. If HBox keeps his stick in the up direction, where it already is thanks to the up tilt, both of these Marth throw mix-ups will certainly hit and kill. So like I said, it is an insane gamble for Hungrybox to try to go for this. If we pull up Zane's inputs, we can see that Zane attempted an aerial following the jump out of shield to beat the grab, but this still loses to the puff up tilt. It's sort of hard to tell by the way if Zane would have rather had a fair or a dare since his C-stick position is down and diagonal here, but that exact coordinate does give fair. Unfortunately, due in part to this C-stick position though, getting hit by HBox's up tilt makes Zayn ASDI closer to the puff, which actually makes a rest confirm off of it easier, despite Zayn correctly DIing away. Also fun to note that if Zayn's C-stick was full down, he would have gotten ASDI down on the up tilt as well. This isn't exactly a catch-all solution to Hungrybox's mix-up here though, since the hit still knocks Marth down at 10%, so Zayn could have possibly been in an even worse position. But it's here where things somehow get even more fucked up. Hungrybox connects on the second active frame of his up tilt, but is then a single frame late on the jump after. This is the equivalent of HBox timing his jump as if he hit the up tilt on its first active frame. What's interesting about this though is that Hungrybox is very well known to tap jump with Jigglypuff, and we can confirm that he does it here as well. And the reason this is so interesting is because Melee is well known and in some ways popularized for not having a buffer on its moves, but a major exception to this is in the control stick. Stick motions like tap jumping or fast falling can be buffered up to three frames prior to your character becoming able to perform the intended action, meaning there's a setup to have motions involving the control stick occur as quickly as the game would allow you to do it. Because we know Hungrybox went for a tap jump and not a button jump, we know he would have a four frame window between the three frames he has in the stick buffer and the first actionable frame of what he wants to do to be able to get a frame perfect jump. If you stick jump and don't get a frame perfect input here, it means you didn't use the stick buffer. This is a pretty roundabout way of saying that Hungrybox could have buffered this jump to go for the rest, but he actually times it for consistency. Alright, so let's take inventory of where we're at. 
HBox hits a crazy mix-up, it pays off, but some slight timing differences cause him to be a frame late on the jump follow-up. He still has some pretty solid drift and he lets the rest rip, but he sends it too early. One frame too early, to be exact. And like I said earlier, rest is one of four frame one moves in the game, and it's only active for its single startup frame. So Zane is still in hit stun for a few more frames, but HBox only needed to wait for one in order to confirm this hit, get the kill, and reset the bracket. Zane can charge a shield breaker to claim his first ever in region major and defend his home turf for the first time in his career. Oh, this might be curtains now, Brandon. We ain't shot clock territory, Walt. Here we go. Okay, yeah, he's no got press. a rest. No he press. has to rest. Zane knows now he has the lead. 30 seconds left on this last game. Here we okay. go. Okay. Ace Bucks can find a There oh, it is. The oh, rest no. is it. It's over. Woo. Zane says, I am number one in the world for a reason. And we'll take this one home. There is so much shit going on in this clip. If HBox goes for almost anything but this up tilt mix up, he pretty much instantly loses. If he tap jumps a frame earlier with the same rest timing, or rests a frame later with the same tap jump timing, he wins. To perhaps add insult to injury, Zane goes for a counter hit fair a few frames after HBox goes for this rest, which could wake HBox right back up, but it doesn't hit because Puff's rest is invulnerable for the first 26 frames. This is the only time intangibility is actually a nerf, because it meant here that Zane wasn't punished for his panic option. On top of all of that, melee characters can also contort their hurtboxes like silly little virtual gymnasts, which is in part how, in matchups like these, Jigglypuff is able to crouch underneath Marth's standing grab. The devs might have also scaled Puff's model down a little smidge, which helps. Thanks to a cool video by Jojo Jets, we can see that Marth's legs are contorted to the right on this frame of hit stun, which effectively saves Zane. Additionally, unlike something like Donkey Kong's tie, for instance, Marth's sheath does not have a hurt box. But if Marth's sheath did have a hurt box, this rest also hits. Oh, one last thing, because yeah, why wouldn't there be more? HBox also went for an almost identical setup to here to win game two, and it worked. God, this game is just so broken. The crazy thing about Melee is that this wasn't even the first time a single frame catastrophe had happened to either of these players. At CEO Dreamland back in 2017, HBox just barely missed out on an edge guard by one frame against Mewtwo King in Game 5 of Losers Finals. And at one of the greatest Melee sets of all time, Smash Summit 11, Zayn fell victim to the infamous $40,000 frame, where he was just one frame off from hitting Mango in a sequence that would have won him the tournament. This is the beauty and insanity that is Melee, though. Sometimes all it takes is 0.02 seconds to make or break someone's tournament. And if we're being honest, that's what keeps us coming back for all these years. Melee is bullshit, but it's our bullshit. Thanks for watching. Big thank you to Avishua Stein, Bobby Wasabi, Eric is Cool, and NNG Esports.